Hello and welcome. I am the Restless Kaiser. And I am Johnny B. But together we are... Modeling for Advantage! Advantage. Skidoosh, mate. Skidoosh, mate. Epic. This is a big old box of Beast. black powder. Beast, a, a box of black powder. <laughs> Boom. Um, <laughs> what can you tell me? What's this? It this says it there. The Waterloo campaign. The, this is the Prussian Star Army for uh, Warlords. Epic, thirteen and a half mil Napoleonic. Their proprietary scale. Perfect scale. Perfect scale, perfect scale. So do you want to tell them what's in the box while I get this one open then, John? Oh my. And we'll talk about it then. The Waterloo campaign, Blushen's Prussian army starts as it contains a bespoke A5 softback black powder epic battles rule book. Full colour assembly and painting guide. Full colour flag sheet, which is awesome. Eight mounted brigade commanders. Eight units of Prussian line infantry, which is 80 men per unit. Ouch, that's a lot. Five units of landwehr infantry, which is 80 men per unit. Two units of ranked up Jaegers, again, 80 men per unit. 35 skirmishing Jaegers, five bases of landwehr cavalry, three bases of Prussian dragoons, three bases of Prussian uhlans, three bases of Prussian hussars, 12 pounder foot artillery batteries, of which you get eight guns, mm -hmm. one six pounder horse artillery battery, of which is three guns, a windmill, MDF scenery piece and 6D6. Wow. That's a lot of stuff. That's mental, sir. Indeed, indeed. So we'll look at the sprues in detail. We talk, so we'll talk about the other crap uh, before that first. So you do get 6D6. And they're my favourite. And you get the ubiquitous Warlord 6 Cracker Dice. Cracker Dice. Look at them. Beautiful. Ah, you get your bases. Many bases. You get your manual. You, this is the same manual that you've seen in the others. So. What they've done with this, if, if you're new to it, is they've taken a black powder manual and made it uh, not generic. So they've taken out all of the elements that are not um, horse and musket era Napoleonic stuff. Oh, really? So there's things in black powder that are from before and from after that. Okay, in the standard um, book. In the standard book and changed all the photographs. Yeah, so um, if you nice. want to play Napoleonic black powder, this is a, a, a little bit easier Hence to use. the bespoke A5 yeah. softback. Mm. And the big change is the scenarios in the back don't cover the whole sort of 250 year period of black powder. Okay. They're all Waterloo campaign scenarios. Happy days. So there you go. That's that. And best of all, you get bubble wrap. The bubble wraps it. Yeah, we've reviewed quite a few of the Warlord. Uh, big box products, and sometimes the manuals get a bit dinged up. Unfortunately, yes. So this, is a this is, uh, and that was certainly the case with the Gettysburg one. Yep. With the Gettysburg oh, yeah, one, because right um, there was just so dude. much sprue. So they started doing that, which is really nice. Um, yeah, all right, you get your sprue oh, types. Uh, you get your windmill, which we'll talk about in a wow. moment. You packed by Sherry. Who's Cherie? Cherie is Morella's doppelganger, obviously. Must be. Um, you get your little painting guide, if you want to show them that, John. That's handy. And you get your flag sheet. Which is epic. <laughs> epic. Prussian painting guide. Oosh. This looks very good. Uh, it's step by step, so you'll be happy with that. Blocking colours, doing your details. Shading washes, basing, what next? Cavalry and commander's artillery. Quite comprehensive, sir. Yeah. It even yeah. gives you um, epaulets and collars color, and cuffs. Collar and cuffs and buttons, even. So if you yeah. really want to go down to that kind of detail on it's, these it's crazy little there. dudes, you can. And the flag sheets you've got, you've not got flags for every single regiment, every battalion, but you've got flags for a lot of them. But obviously, they follow a certain pattern, <laughs> they follow a style. Um, so uh, the Prussian army, then, um, as we look at the sprues, I need to separate these out for a moment. So you've got three different sprue types in here, and, and right off the bat, I'm, I'm really pleased that they've done that. So yet again, it's showing as the as the make more product within the range, they're getting better at it. Why I say that is, um, I think the distribution of unit across the sprue is better. Mm. Okay. You know, so they've realized that making, man manufacturing and designing and getting one of these into production is expensive. So let's think carefully about what it is we're going to put on it. Yeah. 
So in the previous two sets, we had an infantry sprue, a cavalry, a light and a heavy cavalry sprue, and every sprue came with a gun and things, a cannon and things like that. And actually anybody who's built any of those has probably got far more cannon than they need, yeah. for example. Okay. Far more brigade commanders than they've got brigades. <laughs> so in this one, you've got an infantry sprue and you've got a cavalry sprue, both of which have got a cannon on them. Yes. But then you've got a landfair sprue, which is a mix of light infantry, landfair cavalry, and landfair infantry. Okay, so this is uh, a, the unique sprue, as and, it were. Yeah. Well, not and, unique, but... And if you, yeah, but if you look at the British and the French, they made this sort of Highlanders this. sprue. and they made seen, No, because they came it? in a separate box. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas these sprues, so they've just... They've put more variety on each of the sprues um, to reduce the overall number of sprues and give you what you want. And, and I think that that's a really positive step forwards. So, um, shall we start with the... Which sprue would you like to start with, John? Uh, I've got the Landwehr in my hand. You've got the Landwehr in your hand. Okay. Um, so this is, as I said, this is probably the most interesting of the sprues. Um, you get five of these in here. So you've got one, two, three, four, four infantry stands. Yeah. Confirmed. Yes. Because the stands, they're ranked yeah, up in they're pairs. Two, aren't they? Yeah. they fit on these. Um, these are cool because they plug. Yeah. Plug and play, guys. They plug, plug and, and play. play. Absolutely. Um, and the, the thinking behind that partly is this is a massive project to paint. You can yeah. play the game before you've painted it all. Yeah. And I think uh, you might want to. <laughs> you can some, yeah. Yeah. Um, so these are pretty identical as, as you would expect. But your command sprue, again, you've got a little drummer and an officer. Scanning. Oh, yes. Can you yeah. see there? Yeah. Um, and they've given you your standard. The pike for your standard is separate. Which is up here. Yeah. So you need to glue Where that on. Where does that go, though? Yeah, I think... In the dudes, you take a take a rifle out and slap it in there. I'm, you know what? I've not, not seen an, an example of this. No. I was expecting I've a dude with a little... So if you look at the instruction guide, it, can you then... Can you then infer I've, from that I've where really it's got gone? I've got a painting guide. Uh, okay. Huh? So there's there's been some cutting, I imagine. Interesting. So I think there might be an instance of it on... That's odd. So you get it as standard on the normal sprue of infantry. There's a dude with that pipe already oh. there. But for some reason, the Landwehr come with that separate one, which... Well, maybe the Landwehr don't have standards. Maybe that's the case. That is the case by the looks of things. Bonus, yes. bonus, bonus flagpole. Just, just, just looking at um, those. Is there nothing on there? No. No. Well, there you go, folks. There you go. Yeah. So uh, that's interesting. I didn't realise that. So on this sprue, then, you've got... Um, uh, you've got six Landwehr cavalry. And a tiny trumpet. <laughs> tiny trumpet? Bugle, sorry. Bugle. <laughs> up you, near oh, the, you've, up got, near se the you've got a separate bugle, yeah. Oh, so you can so stick that on the, on the saddle of one of these guys. <laughs> get your bugle. Sorry. It, it may well be that that's to give you the uh, cavalry a standard. It might be for that. Mate. I'm not, sh I'm not yeah, sure. Could be. Um, yeah. So Landwehr then... In the Napoleonic period, Napoleon goes around and he conquers most of Europe, right? Boom, done it. But he doesn't take it all over. He turns most of the former great states or great powers, like Austria, become vassals in some way. They're, they're like, they're like um, un under contract. Okay. All right? Yeah, it's like, you won't mess around with this, this or this, and if I go to war, you'll provide me with some troops. Right. He starts doing this in, with the Confederation. They're around all the little German states, and he unifies them into one super state, still with their own princes and kings. Are they quite separated at this time, then? Yeah, yeah. Germany, Germany, Germany is quite separate from Prussia, and Germany wow. is, is quite early on under the yoke of France, under this Confederation of the Rhine, which notionally, I think... One of the, maybe it's Bavaria or Westphalia, one of them is notionally the emperor okay. of the Rhine, Puppet but state. still a vassal of Napoleon's. So he's done this He's done this in Germany, in their little kingdoms, that's understandable. But he then does the same thing with Austria and Prussia, having beaten them in, in various wars. Mm. Prussia has become a client state of Napoleon. So this Prussian army, the, the, the 
heirs of Frederick the Great, the previous bound of Great European Wars, was the was the superpower of continental Europe. Right. Okay. Then, these then, are the then, dudes. These were the dudes. Unfortunately, they're still fighting the same way against Napoleon in uh, eighteen oh seven, etc. And it doesn't go down well. Right. He's it doesn't. Go, it doesn't work out well at all. Now, interestingly. With kind of tones of what will come in the future, mm. after the First World War, Napoleon restricts the size of the Prussian army. Okay. Says so you can only have an army of a certain size. And what they do is they make an army which is essentially six brigades, each of, each of two regiments, and it's very small. Very, very small by Napoleon. So no standards. direct threat. So that, yeah, they will never him. again. That's, that's the philosophy. And this is where. The names Scharnhorst and Gneisenauer come along. Okay. You know, you know the two German battle of cruisers of the World War II. Right. They're named after these two Prussian chiefs of staff. Right. These are senior staff officers, and they develop what's called the Krumper system. That sounds painful, mate. Yeah, mate. What's the but Krumper system? The Krumper system um, is recognizing you have an incredibly small mm. army. But in time of war, you're going to need to rapidly increase the size of it. Mm. This is very much like what's happening in Germany in the 1920s. Is is you don't keep men the same men in the unit for very long. You rotate the men in the unit so you have this cadre of trained men. So, so when you do a call up, through, you've got three times the size. Exactly. That's clever, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So exactly. mm -hmm. And you, you're paying them a basic retainer, and it's not breaking the terms of it. Um, That's sneaky, man. So the um, the the Scharnhorst and Gneisenau create this create this this um, shadow army, mm. and it's got two com it's got two components. One of them is the um, the reserve forces right so the the actual number of infantry infantry battalions is really double what it is because they're cycling through men That's and it's clever. like every every month every company has to discharge so many men and it's really quite formulaic oh wow so they know that within two years they've th th they've done genius. so and so um but then the land there is the next tier down the next is what they then do is they say to all the states within Prussia, each of the the regions are responsible for creating um, a militia force. Wow, yeah. And they have to train them and equip them at their own expense. So when they go to war in 1813 with Napoleon, there's these three tiers of troops are quite different. Mm -hmm. So you've got the regulars and then the reserves which were these guys that have been trained previously in yeah, the Krumper system. Going on. And then you've got this state militia, the Landwehr. The and then under that, you have some air. How is there anything under yes. that? I'm reading the back of this box, and it's like, these dudes were going to war with no shoes. People. <laughs> yeah. They were really poorly equipped. The Landwehr. The Landwehr, yeah. Yeah, because they're state militia. So... So, uh, well, like, like, how, like, how much like is your mayor kind of, willing to spend on exactly, you? Exactly. Like, in, in any kind of system, some people make it do a better job of it than others, mm. and there's a degree of corruption. Because, of course, 1815 in particular, this is the war that nobody expected to fight. We beat Napoleon last year and we exiled him. So that's done. And so the, the job is done, right? Yeah. People are considering demobilizing at this point. People are starting to demobilize. This, yeah. Don't need this all. And then suddenly, bang, we need it all again. Slippery little sucker. <laughs> yeah, Skates. yeah. He's, he's whoa, like whoa. a snake in the grass. He's back. You know. So um these especially the militia states. But it's important to understand that um there's a big difference in quality between Prussian landwehr and other provincial militias, mm. insofar as these, although these are raised as state militias, states militias rather than by the nation state, most of these guys did fight in previous campaigns. Okay, the, and, right. they're, and they're not they're not like farmers Just with guns. Dudes, yeah. They have had training to some degree. Okay, uh, they do have equipment, um, and in fact, the reserve units. So I mentioned that the the, the regulars, that, that the reserves tier, under the Crumper yeah. system, that middle tier, they're actually just incorporated as new regiments. Just increase the number of regiments from twelve to twenty-four or whatever by 
um, using all of these reserves. Fair dues. Because there is, after a year and a half campaigning in 1813-14, they're not different to the regulars. Sweet. They've had a lot of experience. That's good. So that's that's your land there. What in, t- in, in terms of the Spruden, um, your land very much. They got that really distinctive, um, almost like a, almost like a forage cap. Yeah, is that common? No, no. Uh, the, the regulars have got the regulars have got shakos. Yeah. They've got shakos. Um, Not that you can see, guys, but there'll be better pictures, I'm sure. Yeah, and so again, these guys are usually wearing great coats, and that is because great coats are a cheap way of giving ah, somebody a uniform. You said that in another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You'll, you'll find a lot of like, they're hastily raised for. What forces? We might not have all of the gear, but so you think about today, you'd pay a lot more for a great coat than a tunic. Yeah, today. But a yeah. tunic has got a lot more work in it, especially back then. Yeah, all the bits and bobs, the cuffs, the bobbles, the exactly. buttons, the exactly. Bits. They're significantly more expensive to make for sure than than a, than a great coat, which is essentially a bit of fabric wrapped around with a couple of sleeves. Yeah. So these are, these are cheap to mass produce. Um, to a low specification. Still, it's uniform. Yeah, and then um, you've got your landfair cavalry, which again, the um, these are almost okay. invariably armed with lances. Sometimes you'll see these in orders of battle coming up as cossacks, All but right. they're they're militia cavalry. Um, and the thing about the lance is, it, the Napoleonic period sees a bit of a resurgence of the lance. Why? Why is that? That's, With it, all this black powder weaponry, you know, you're going to have pistols and all sorts of yeah, nice swords. Yeah, because if you look at sort of Renaissance, like Renaissance easy, armies are usually armed with pistols yeah. or, or shortened muskets um, and sabres. Whereas I think the square formation in particular, you, you, you suddenly had a, a return of shock cavalry you've had in the Napoleonic period. Now, exactly how much... Actual colliding with men, horses do. Yeah, yeah. I'm, Debatable, I'm deeply skeptical about ab- about the, the the actual collision bit, whether that actually happens, um, rather than people making gaps, or more importantly, uh, people running away. Yeah. Horses are pretty big. <laughs> horses are big. Scary yeah. at speed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but they're not going to have many legs left if they collide not, with, not a, really, with a column no. of infantry. No. Um, so squares have come in with with Wellington, and what happens with squares is t- is two things. One is this age old problem: the horse doesn't actually want to collide with a body of men, um, and so you've created space. Mm-hmm. So the horses will naturally just move around in the gaps. Yeah, yeah, because when you've gone from being in a line to in a square, there's gaps between all of the squares. Um, but some of the few examples of squares being broken are with lances. I'm surprised. I mean, well, right. So I think the Polish lancers um, that famously did this, but they were trained to throw the lance underarm. Oh, that changes things. That changes things quite a bit, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't think you do that over great distance. No, but if you've got and momentum you're, and, and you're coming at them. And you're still you being just... shot at. And, and these kind of lancers, of course, um, these kind of lancers, they're light cavalry lancers. They're not in armour. So they're a lot swifter. Mm. So maybe they maybe they can, yeah. you know, picking the guys off the end. I don't know. But the lance is a fairly cheap weapon as well. Yeah, it's just a stick, right, with it's, a pointy bit. It's just a stick with a pointy bit. Yeah. So if you recruit from places where people already have their own horses, then this is fairly and cheap. And their own like sticks. Cavalry. So your Prussian infantry regiment, right, which is usually deploys as a regiment, um, will consist generally of two musketeer battalions, which is just your line infantry. One fusilier battalion, which is your Ye- or Jaeger battalion, Jaegers. which is your light infantry, right. and one um, grenadier battalion, generally speaking. But the the thing in by sticking four of them on here, it's again just dispersing <clears throat> the variety across the sprues. Yes. Yeah. So you've got. Um, I don't know. Is this the only place you've got them? There no, is you have one some on the cavalry yeah. sprue. Yeah. When we look at that. Um, so these are these are nice to see as well. In terms of the posing, the infantry all looks the same, except for the one command sprue. What would you say, John? Uh, slight variation. Oh, there there's uh, some of the pouches. Yeah, there's two as well where some of them haven't got their their little hats on. 
Yeah. And the eye patches all are wounded. So there's a slight variation, but yeah. generally speaking, I mean, naturally, they're all in pretty much the same pose. Yeah. Because that's how you do it. Because <laughs> they're standing shoulder to shoulder. There's not right? much you can do with it, yeah. but there is a bit of variety on there. Yeah. But yeah, some to, of them have the proper look. Yeah, some of them have um, what looks like. Uh, so you see this these ones with the really wide strap across the front. Yeah, like that's a, a little sash bit thing. weird because that's probably a that's usually a great coat, but that might be a bedroll. It looks like yeah, when the it must the be a bedroll. Yeah, yeah. WW two wrapped over because these guys have not got packs because they're cheaply no. equipped. Um, and your cavalry are they? Are they on different? They places? haven't got any pack. Oh no, a, there is a pack. The drummer, no, the officer. He's got himself a pack. He's got the bunny, you see. Uh, the horses. Yeah. The got different hats, mate. Uh, yeah, these look like five different five different poses. All in variations of horsey legs and tilting yeah. of. Of the lance, yeah. Now, you, but if there's too much variation in, in cavalry, certainly on this scale, mm. they look really weird. Yeah, they look like they're imagine. all doing different things. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas they're really all. Are you doing want them this, ideally at least pointing all the same. They're direction. all going the same way at the same speed. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the things. Some rising yeah, up. Yeah, some, yeah. So although the, the the lances are angled slightly, they, they want to be all broadly like yeah, I'm yeah. about to stab the guy in way. front of me here, right? Yeah. So yeah, that's all right. All right. That's good. So that's that's the land vest brew then, which is she's all right, I think. That's not there's, bad. Is it? There's five of them in there. Five. Yeah, yeah. Oosh. So your land vest is going to be a lower class than your than your um, line infantry, but not by a lot. It's not it's not like junk troops, you know. Skills there. It doesn't look like the equipment is, but yeah, there's, there's, a, there's, they've had less training and they've probably been on campaign for less time and certainly have paid less. But, but they're it's not, but a, a they're not, bot. they're not guys who were just conscripted yesterday yeah. necessarily. Um, compared to some militias in some armies, these are not like a Literally, city defense yeah. type just, guys. If you've got arms and legs, you come in with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That that. There's um, which war games often struggle with. You know, you have elite troops, you have regular troops, you have inferior troops. Yeah. And Prussian Lambert are like at the top in, end of in inferior the top end troops. Of inferior troops. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, anyway, so uh, two more sprues to look at, John. What do you fancy? Um, let's go with the old. Let's stick on the infantry still. Let's keep there. Stick on with the let's go with the, the basic line dudes. Yeah, the basic line infantry are Duderunios. It's very nice. Well, we got same again. One, two, three, four, five. So you got five bases, I'm here, here, rather than four. Now that makes me think that one of them might be a bit different. Oh, I oh, really? Have yeah, we got to spot the you know, difference. Normally, it's four base battalions. You see, right? We've only got one standard in here. Uh, 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 trying to look for the hats. I, I'm not seeing much difference. They've predominantly all got shakos. They look like they mostly got One's shackles. Got a banner. There's a couple of different variations, maybe, of Ossifer. On this top line, you've got one with his, his sabre to his side, and then mm. you've got one with his sabre yes. raised. Yes. Is, nice. that, is that the difference? So you've got That's different nice front rank touch. options. And you've got a few... Oh, is it just that? I think that... You've got a drummer and a banner there, which you've spotted. On that on that top line, is this, is it just providing variation? Because some I of these are in like the field it. caps, aren't they? Yeah, the forage caps, whereas the rest of them are pretty much all in shakos. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, because certainly with the like with the um, the British one, you got a, a sprue of nine, of ninety fifth in column on here. Yeah, that was what was making me think is that. So um, as well as the infantry, I, I like the fact that you've got different. There's there's more variety of officer pose in this. I mean, there's still only two. Yeah. Repeated over how many sprues of this do you get? <laughs> so you get eight of these. Eight of those. Um, you've also got a twelve pounder on here. Right. Uh, which I think may be the first twelve pounder we've had. That's a bit um, chunky. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So Not for anyone. Six pounder. Um, the French also use twelve pounders, um, but they're mostly in the guard. We haven't looked at the guard sprue. They might have got a twelve pounder in there. Right. Um, but I, so I think in in the French armies you tend to have twelve pounders as core artillery, 
an eight, six, eight, and nine pounder divisional artillery. Okay, that means absolutely nothing to me, guys. Well, you understand that they're higher level, yeah. higher tiers of organisation. Um, whereas the Prussians, again, sort of everything's a bit more uniform because they kind of had to build an army from. They were mm. told you're allowed a tiny army compared to what you've got. you've got. Start again, so they drew up the army that they wanted for that size. So um, I think you've got a lot of twelve pounders in the Prussian army. Wow. Um, compared to others. Big bad boom. Uh, yeah, and that's a really nice brigade commander you've got there. The dude bloke. Yeah, he looks quite quite a bespoke fellow there. Hello. Again. But is he the, but again the, is he the, the dude the bloke? Snag is he with the these main dude? Often, yeah, it's often the, you only get one of these models, don't you? Yep. So all your brigade oh, commanders boo. are gonna look like him. Um, so, uh, speaking of commanders, do you uh, do you know anything about the the guy in charge? Do you know anything about Bluka? Uh, Bluka, I thought it was Blucher. I'm making that up. I can tell you, right, that mm. uh, he he was actually retired at the time. Yep. In uh, Silesia or Silesia or whatever you pronounce. Are you that. reading this on the back no, of something? No, <laughs> this is it from memory. I may be looking slightly to the right, but I assure you, it's Are you reading just the memory back of the box, John? Uh, and they needed him uh, for mm. the task of phrasing down the upstart Frenchman, which was Napoleon, one would assume. Yeah, it's a little bit of blurb on the back there, guys. A little guys. bit of blurb on the back of uh, Bluka. Bluka is one of these great, great characters from military history. Um, he's somewhere in the region of 80 years old. What? <laughs> was life he's... expectancy anywhere near that back no. then? No. No, this dude. he's horrendously unfit, he's a drunk, he's a serial womanizer, but he hates the French. That's crazy. He utterly hates the French. And he that alone has kept wants him alive. to kill Frenchmen all day long. No, no quarter, kill Frenchmen. Wow. So the thing, the situation that I mentioned before about this, this great, um, the inheritors of the legacy of Frederick the Great were shamed and and ridiculed by Napoleon. They were beaten soundly mm. um, for their attachment to older style of tactics. And most of the troups at Jena Auschwitz, that's these, these battles that they lose against Napoleon in 1807, etc. and 1809, I think they're not those troops are not committed. But the but the shame that is placed upon Prussia, this limitation of its army, this client state thing, these guys these are much more committed. Wow. These have got something to fight for. They're, they're fighting for freedom. And, yeah, completely. And the, and, and, and from the tyranny honor, of the, the French. The tyranny of French tyranny. Exactly. Got to get rid of that. So these soldiers are much more motivated. These guys want freedom from French tyranny. Yeah. And, and they're going to get it. And, okay. But they don't have this sort of experience. They don't have a great legacy of success necessarily. Even in, and, and in 1815, they've largely been stood down. You know, I thought we, well, get, games, games have been won now. Yeah. 1814, we beat Napoleon, we've exiled him, game over. 1815, oh gosh, we've got to all do it again. You need commanders who are prepared to fight Napoleon. One of the things that happened in 1814 was they realised that fight anybody but Napoleon will win us the war. Really? You know, yeah, you may have heard this thing is like Napoleon was worth 50,000 men or, on the battlefield or whatever. These numbers are banded around in that respect. But there is, there's more than Napoleon in France. So if we do, yeah. if we fight everybody then else. You're going to get some wins, right? Yeah, but we had massive numerical advantage in the 1813, 1814 campaigns, mm. which just kept growing. In this particular campaign, we don't have a huge numerical advantage. We're not fighting on home turf. We're fighting in Belgium. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Napoleon sees the initiative. So the kind of guy you need for this moment is not someone who's going to avoid Napoleon. Is someone who's going to just get stuck just in. Get stuck in. But yeah, and realises that if we just kill enough Frenchmen, then we'll be all right. Sounds he had something fair. like seven horses shot under him during the course of his life. This dude, and he's still rocking still around. Still rocking around, yeah, yeah. But How? an absolute despicable human being. But exactly the man that you needed at the time. Wow. So in terms of the campaign, the Hundred Days campaign, what's happened, Napoleon having a smaller force than the combined Anglo-British force, yes, uh, 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 Anglo-Prussian force, is... He's recognised they're in encampments, their armies are dispersed, 
while they're recruiting, getting stuff ready for the campaign season, he's going to attack while the, t while the two are separate. So there's a series of battles before Waterloo, notably Lini and Catrabra. Catrabra is a smaller French force, fights the British, and Napoleon's main army goes to Lini and fights the Prussians. And Lini is a oh. battle about which we don't, we don't know nearly so much about because the British weren't there. Oh, it's a really? it's a Prussian it's a Franco-Prussian battle that the Prussians lose and they lose pretty badly. Well, it sounds like if you have got the main bulk of the French on them. Yeah, yeah, and it's Napoleon with the main force oh. fights the Prussians, beats them. But unlike in Napoleon's better days, he doesn't beat them quite hard enough. He thinks he has, and he thinks what's going to happen is the Prussians are going to go back towards Berlin. They're going to go been... back towards Prussia, fall yeah. back. Fall back on your own lines of communication, right? Yeah. It's where you supply your reinforcements, etc. Fall back that way. And the British are going to fall back towards one of the ports. So you've split So them. you're going to split them in half. Perfect. This is plan all along. Yeah. Yeah. What Blucher has done, though, is Blucher knows Napoleon's going to do that. And he's looped round. So he's gone off east and then doubled back. And Napoleon sent a smaller force under Grouchy. 30,000 men to follow the Prussians to keep them moving. Just to make sure. Keep yeah, because he wants, he wants to finish off the British and then chase the Prussians. Yeah, this is, this is his plan. Mm. Um, and what happens, so at, Le at Lini, th this was this big battle the Prussians lose, a battle at the same sort of time as Waterloo called Wavre is happening where the Prussians are fighting this a really extended rearguard operation where Grouchy feels he's fighting at one end oh, he against the Prussians. He's at the back end of the line. It, and, he, and he is, but, but, but the rest of the Prussian army is coming to Waterloo. Oh! So he fights a really successful rearguard action at Wavre oh, and manages to get. To and and to it, it, indeed, you know, if you've watched the movie or read, read the history, the really the defining. Turning point of Waterloo is it doesn't matter how hard Napoleon beats the British, he realizes that this Prussian army is here now. Yeah. And ambushed and they're not. They're fresh. <laughs> they're fresh, yeah. Boom. Absolutely. Um so wow. yeah, the the Prussian part of this campaign is the bit that's always interested me more. Because you, you're the kind of the underdog of of the combination. You're the one yeah. that, that lost <laughs> one yeah, of the you've battles. been battered, you've been yeah. pushed, and then you're back in the game. broken, you're, you're here now. Yeah, and pretty much all of the other Allied commanders would have done exactly what Napoleon expected, which is keep, which fall back. Get back, yeah, just get yeah. out of Dodge. It's, it's very risky, what but he did. this old boy. Yeah, because when, when you get beaten that hard, the troops well, are not that keen on fighting again. Yeah, true, true. Unless you've got a and, certain unless charisma. Unless you've got a certain charisma, exactly. There's one more sprue to go. There is! Uh, so this is the cavalry sprue. Oosh. Uh, is that the same size cannon? You get a cannon on the No, this one's well. a six this pounder. One. This one's a six pounder. One and it six says it's horse artillery. Batteries. Horse artillery. So I wonder if the crew uniforms are different. Get three of those. Well, they seem to be in long coats and the others don't. They seem to be in tunic. With... I'm comparing one cavalry sprue with the other oh, yeah. cavalry sprue. Oh, yeah, right, yeah. because yeah, yeah, I'm do an that. idiot. Don't do that. Oh There's yeah, the uniforms are different. Yeah. yeah, they've got a, they've, like you say, they've, they seem to be wearing a coat rather than a tunic. Okay. Yeah. Almost like a frock coat. Is that because all the cavalry have got frock coats too? No, I don't think so. Difficult to so. tell. Um, right, so your cavalry sprue. We had a few different types of cavalry here, didn't we? Apparently, right. yes. Um, so with the Landwehr cavalry was over there, they're, they're, your, they're your light lances. That's the top cheap. one. So you've got Dragoons, Erlands, and Hussars. Right. Uh, uh, this is... I'm guessing weaponry is going to be the tell on these, right? Yeah. Surely. Absolutely. Uh, we've got Sabres. So they're... Oh. We've got big oh. fat Sabres. Six of. I think they're in clumps of six, mate. Six, six, and six. So you've got six lances, six light curved sabers, and then six massively heavy. Yes. Now sabers. I thought dragoons had straight swords, but uh, but these ones certainly well, have curved ones. Don't one of them? Don't you? You've, you've told me before. One of well, heavy like, cavalry like, have straight for swords the, for the British. Yeah. No, no, no. Heavy cavalry have straight swords. I thought dragoons had straight swords. Right. So yeah, your your hussars are these ones at the top. Um, 
And are they? Yeah, they they have. They have. They've got um, you know the braiding on the jacket. On the oh, tunic. okay. Yeah, with the light, I can see it. Yes. Yeah, with the, with <laughs> it's in... a it's a very dark sprue, guys. Yeah, it's very difficult to see. Yeah, and they've also got, um, but they've also some of them have got a musket. Or, uh, on the, oh yes, on the on the uh, okay. sorry, a carbine on the hussars. Yep. Yeah. So the the dragoons are the ones with the broader sabers, as you say, and then the last ones, these lancers. These are not la the land bear cavalry. These ones. are Erlans. So these are line lancers. Um, yeah, so again, really nice. But like I said before, with this with this sprue, you've got five of the light infantry on here, which is sweet. And these seem to be all in different poses, in than different the other poses dude. to the other one. Yeah, so you've got a nice mix of are light they, though, infantry. Are they? Yes. Yeah. And the other good thing about Prussian Jaegers, of course, is a lot of them have got rifles. Yeah. Rather than muskets. Proper rifles. Proper rifles, yeah. Um, the French don't have rifles because Napoleon didn't think they were any good. Really? Yeah. Yeah. But surely they're are they, are they not faster to reload and stuff? Are they... They're a lot slower to reload. Are they... Right. But, so with the... musket was the, you know, the powder thing in the... Oh, yeah, yeah. What, so is the rifle. Oh. But the rifle's got grooves in it, so the ball's very really tight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a breech loading rifle. Right? <laughs> yeah, you know. No, no, no. Um, no, your Napoleonic rifled musket, Napoleonic rifle is a rifled musket. It's a musket so it's with two and a half turn screw in and down a so barrel. It's giving you a higher velocity? No, muscle velocity is lower, but this this is basic ballistics, right? Sorry if I'm teaching grandma to suck. No, on. you're teaching me, man. I'm right. teaching Johnny B how to shoot. So, rifling. There's, a, there's a groove in the barrel, right? Which makes them, the makes ball. it spin. And making it spin keeps it straighter uh, for longer. It, it doesn't me then. move off, right. yeah? So they're more accurate. They're more accurate over the, but the actual maximum range is less because it's losing energy during that. Right. But the effective range, the range which you'll hit something, it's is significantly higher. greater. Ooh, goes the graph. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, but the rate of fire achieved with a, with a rifle musket is significantly lower mm. because okay. it's so much more work. If that ball isn't tight fitting in the groove, then, then the rifling doesn't the work. Right. Yeah. Um, okay, I can see why. I'd be so thinking it's, that then. it's a slower rate of fire. It's significantly more expensive to produce. But Napoleon personally didn't just feel like the rifles no were point. worth it. Right. So French voltigeurs just don't have them. That doesn't mean you don't have individual voltages who picked one up on campaign yeah. or whatever. Like, oh, yeah, fancy this. Yeah. But these seem to be specifically using those then, the, these rifle... Yeah, these uh, the, the, the proportions, I'm, I'm not so sure. You need to do a little bit of work on that. Yeah. Um, it's entirely possible that all of them have them. Okay, cool. Because I know that they were into it. But it's equally possible that it's like just the guard battalion. In, yeah, I, I just I just don't know the answer to that. Sweet. Um, so that's those. You can see from the back of the box, like, like the other ones, this is a, this is a fantastic force. That you're an get immense here. amount of plastic in yeah. here. There really is. There really is. I'm still I'm still thinking that I've missed them on this infantry sprue. You know, you may have because there's an extra base of infantry without. Is the flag. it just because they've got more dudes? Are eight they, are they eight in, units of Prussian line infantry, which is and eight, you get eight, eight per unit. And you get eight right, sprues. So that's that. Five units, I don't know. Ranked up Jaegers. Two units of ranked up Jaegers. So some of these are Jaegers. That must be the dude with the little, they're the ones with the hats that you said about. The ones both then, at the top. Have they got different hats? Some of them have got little, uh, little like sailor hats. And they've got different packs. As we look at it again, is that what it is? Is it that? No, they've actually got packs though, them ones. It's, so it's on the infantry rather than the Jaeger bro. Yep, I'm looking at the top. They're the only ones. Mate, nah, nah, I'm, I'm tapping out. I can't, I don't know. We're gonna, uh, I don't know enough. We're, we're gonna tap out on this one. I can't, I can't tell you, I'm a little bit embarrassed to say <laughs> which it is. But there is, there is definitely on Something. this brew one of the <laughs> one of these bases. Spot the difference, guys. It, it, Let it us know in the comments. It may be the light that's preventing us from seeing it. 
I'm not sure. Is it these two at the top have got smaller hats? The problem is that they're wearing a mixture of hats. And the top two have both got sabre dudes on the end. Yes. So why would they? Surely it would But be they've one not one. got bayonets. They're ranked up Jaegers. We found it. <sighs> That's not... the difference, guys. <laughs> they've not no got bayonets. There probably is some other difference in the uniform we're not seeing now that we know which two it is. There's a couple of like chef hats. But in yes, there. that's those. They're ranked up Jaegers. Says it right there on the back of the box. Yes. But that, that just that still made us go look for it. But the creme de la creme of this box set, sir, is. The creme de la creme of this box set is that now. So this is this is the thing that gives it its flavour. Um I, I'm a huge fan of war games. Start a set coming with a bit of scenery because it makes me believe that um, eventually, if all War Games kits did this, everybody would have a lot more scenery. Yes, over, over time. And the piece of scenery they're giving you for this is iconic. If you see at Lini, this big Prussian battle, yeah, there's a big windmill. That's there the, on, the key on, on, on a hill. And all the paintings you see of Lini, pretty much all of them, is the Prussian got... army filing in retreat past this <laughs> Well, there you go. You got it. You can do the Battle of Lini, mate. And, and, and they give you that in there. Now, I was going to build this this afternoon, genuinely. Right, yeah. You know, I, I took out a piece to, to show you. Um, and, and I took it out and I thought, actually, I'm better off showing you on here... You know, to give you an idea of how easy it is. Right. But if you have a look at this, if I built this, it might look complicated. This, you have, you have a look, It's John. a single sheet. It's a is single it? sheet. That's all it is. Nothing and it else. looks incredibly simple to build. All right, guys, so there we go. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so you've got a base, Ooh. you've got four sides and a lid. The oh. only bit that's a bit tricky is because it's got this domed roof. Yeah. You see all the little bits of planking. And then there's a there's almost oh, like a half these. cog. No, in the bottom these. corner down. These. No. These. You see how they're pegged? <laughs> yeah. And then you've got like a half, these. two half cogs. The arch. Yes. They oh, slap. Pop onto there. They slat into there and glue on the top. <laughs> even look, you can even see it on the picture. <laughs> okay, that's cool. That's yeah. good. Yeah, that's absolutely. getting a quite a complicated shape out of just doing the thing. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, well, and that, there you go, guys. No excuses. Get yourself a windmill. Get yourself a windmill. Here's the ruler. How big is that windmill going to be, John? How big is how, it going to be? How big is the span of the sails? I can't tell you how tall it's going to be. It it's going to be. It's going to be that tall at all. In fact, except it's taller than the sails, right? It's got to be. It's uh, seventy mil high. Which in old money is what? But it's on a pedestal. Nearly three, yeah. Plus a pedestal, which doesn't matter. But the windmill has a span of 175 millimetres. The, the span of the is, sails. Yeah. Which is just about seven inches, sir. Yeah. Seven inches spinning round. Does it spin? So getting one of these in the starter box, because if it's a single player, you're probably not buying multiple copies of the starter box. No. You might do. Well, there's a piece of scenery for the Prussians. This is absolutely the piece of scenery. This is the one, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think so. I'm and like all of this, it's 15 mil Sarissa scenery. It's usable in a range of other theatres. Um, really pleased to see how they've spread out the the variety across the sprues you like that on this I, I really do yeah they may not have been at waterloo which is maybe why they're not here or they may not have different uniforms but there doesn't seem to be the guard regiment here and i think that they probably is that kind did. of a standard thing in, in most uh, regiment number eight i think was the guard oh, regiment. Right. there okay. was a guard regiment and there were cuirassiers of the guard and but they may not have fought waterloo Right, yeah. Or oh, they mean, may not sounds, have they might different have been, uniforms. They might have been holding the rear guard, right? Yeah, yeah, they could have been. Well, I don't know. They could have been. But those are what's not here. Or there might be a box. Oh. They could be. They could do a single box later. Overall, I mean, you don't get a lot of change out of £100 for these. That's, that's, that's okay, true. That's it, it is an expensive set. Um, but I think I, I really like the spread. Yeah. I really Keep like going that. for a couple of years. Modeling and painting. I think it's going to take you a long time to paint all of this. Yeah, and 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 to be honest, for for what you 
for what you want. If you want to play a big battle Napoleonics, surely this you're is going to be spending th that that kind of oh, money, yeah, aren't some. you? You know, um, if you go any other scale, yeah. for sure. Really good to see how they've progressed with their thinking about not not just like ma I'm making an infantry sprue here, but what? How can I make the most out of this sprue? Yeah, um, and putting the other things on there. What I want to see the next time they do some of these, I want to see more brigade commanders. Variations. Variations. They could have popped. They could have popped another one of them on somewhere else. Yeah. I feel, you know, two or even even one on each. You know, as a as a thing to think about. Get you try and try and squeeze the brigade commander so that you've not got so many identical ones. Yeah. It's great having your troops looking identical, but your commanders all looking the same. Kind of, yeah. It's a bit odd. It is it is a bit odd. But because this army's mixed across more sprues, you don't got quite so many of these. Because I think people with the French and the and the British ones have got a mountain of these in the bin. Just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Identically posed bros. You know. All um, together. I don't know if the uniforms are similar enough that you could actually nick the ones from the other armies. You probably can. Because they're mostly going to be dudes in bike I think their looking. intention was you could sort of like... You could mix and match them. Yeah. It's, it's entirely possible. Yeah. Too much difference. Um, we're, we're, we're not going to be doing this anytime soon, but if I was to start one of these, it would be the Prussian army. Yeah? Yeah. That's your favourite. I, I, I think so. Yeah. Well, my favourite is probably the Russian army. But they're not in this campaign. Oh, but they're not in this campaign. Um, but if you want to get into, if you want to get a Prussian army for Waterloo, I think it's really good. Scenery, peace, excellent, excellent decision. Iconic, you say? Yeah. All right, guys. Cool. Those were our thoughts. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. Bye bye. If you've enjoyed this video and you're thinking, hmm, maybe I need to add to the Lead Mountain, consider buying Warlord Epic uh, Waterloo campaign from us on our online store, modlifteradvantage.co.uk. Thank you.